the Cell Guru store, shop, mall, whatever you want to call it, is officially open. You know, we've got so many great things. Our portfolio, our actual range of product line today is so good. We we'll start off with this, the POCO X3. I'll announce it already in terms of hardware at this price point, nothing comes close. But is the experience good enough? Because POCO and Xiaomi, which really is what POCO is all about, ruins it with the ads and the bloatware and everything else experience. We'll find out hardware and then the experience, all of that. Then we'll move on to my favorite story of them all. This is the Shure MV88 Plus Video Kit. It's called a video kit, but it's actually all about audio. If you're a vlogger, if you're a blogger that actually uses video or in any way, even you're using it in any which way where you're creating your own videos with whatever content you're creating, Always remember, 51% of your success will come from audio, only 49% from the quality of the video. And this is the equipment that will take you there with just your mobile phone. You don't need more expensive equipment. Then we look at this, the Samsung M31S and a whole lot more. Like I said, the Cell Guru store is officially open. We'll start off with all the news coming in from the world of mobiles. Ahead of Apple's upcoming iPhone 12 launch event, Google took to a virtual press conference to announce a range of smartphones and smart home products. The Pixel 4a 5G and Pixel 5 are Google's Android standouts for 2020. But this time around, the company is taking a different approach. Instead of competing on specs, both the Pixel 4a 5G and the Pixel 5 are packing mid-range specifications to focus on premium mid-range value. Both phones include top-tier cameras and, for the first time, ultra-wide sensors as well. Differences include a larger battery, IP rating and wireless charging on the higher-end Pixel 5 model. Unfortunately, neither of these smartphones are expected to make their way to India. Other announcements include a new smart speaker as well as an updated Chromecast dongle. The Nest Audio is a completely redesigned speaker that is now 75% louder than the model it replaces. Being a smart speaker, it supports Google Assistant commands and can easily stream music from all popular services. The speaker can automatically adapt the quality of sound based on ambient settings so that you get the best audio possible. While prices are yet to be announced, the smart speaker should be available in India later this month. Finally, there's the Chromecast. Unlike previous generations, this time the dongle supports full-blown Android TV which would give you the entire smart TV experience, including the ability to download apps. Google is yet to announce the availability of the new Chromecast in India. Xiaomi has announced three new smartphones in the Mi 10 lineup. These include the Mi 10T 5G, Mi 10T Pro 5G, and Mi 10T Lite 5G. The Mi 10T Lite, as the name suggests, is a more affordable option with a Snapdragon 750 chipset that brings 5G support. The display has also been improved to a 120Hz refresh rate. The camera setup here includes a 64-megapixel primary shooter paired with an 8-megapixel ultra-wide camera as well as 2-megapixel macro and depth sensors. The Mi 10T steps it up a notch with the Snapdragon 865 chipset while improving the wide-angle camera to a 13-megapixel sensor in addition to a 5-megapixel macro camera. Additionally, the display gets a further upgrade to a 144Hz refresh rate. Finally, the Mi 10T Pro includes the same high-end specifications as the Mi 10T, but improves the camera setup with a 108MP primary camera. The three phones are priced starting 280 euros and go all the way up to 600 euros for the Mi 10T Pro. Like the Mi 10, we can expect to see some of the phones make their way to India in the future. Our top story, of course, is the POCO X3, 16,999 rupees for a phone that literally in every which way tick marks everything. I mean, from the material used, the look of the phone, the screen that they are giving you with this, the number of cameras, the kind of cameras, the front camera, the inside processor, the amount of RAM they are giving you. In every which way, like I said right in the beginning, this is a phone that is absolutely on steroids, but only 
in terms of hardware. The biggest problem with Poco and Xiaomi phones has been that the hardware has been excellent. The price point aggressive and excellent. The software absolutely brutally terrible. I mean, it's so bad that I don't recommend anybody should ever buy a Xiaomi or a Poco phone. Could this be the game changer? Could this be the first time that Poco gets it right? Have they taken it? Look, I'll be happy even if their adware is brought down to a minimum. I know it cannot be completely adware free. It cannot be bloatware free. But if they can take it down to a minimum, I mean the minimum where a self-respecting person who's brought a phone actually says, I don't feel like a fool. I'm not frustrated by this phone. If they can do just that, I mean that would be a good start today will actually answer that question. With the launch of the new POCO X3, the battle for the best mid-range device has really heated up. With a starting price of 16,999 rupees, POCO X3 has a lot to look forward to on the spec sheet. But do the ads in POCO's phones make this a tough sell? We find out in our review. The POCO X3 has a big 6.67-inch FHD Plus display which is almost bezel-less, which made it perfect for our binge-watching sessions. The display gets bright and definitely doesn't feel like a sub-20K phone. It has a 120Hz screen which makes the phone feel snappy and quick. The screen also has a punch hole cutout for the front camera in the centre of the screen. The look and feel of the phone may not be as premium as the screen though. It has a plastic back that catches smudges and fingerprints instantly and the phone is chunky and heavy weighing about 215 grams. On the right side is a power button that accommodates the fingerprint sensor. We really prefer this approach as opposed to the in-screen fingerprint sensor as this is more secure and faster. Battery takes center stage in the POCO X3 as its 6000 mAh battery meant that it easily lasted us well over a day. With the included 33 watts fast charger, you can take this phone from 0 to 100 in less than 90 minutes. There are also two battery saving modes that take the phone from a one day to even three days. The bigger battery meant that we could enjoy gaming without worrying about the phone dying on us midway. The 120Hz screen also meant that our gaming sessions felt snappier than usual. We were also impressed with the presence of a headphone jack on the phone. Moving to the optics, the POCO X3 gets an updated camera setup. It now has a quad camera layout on the back powered by a 64 megapixel main camera, a 13 megapixel ultra wide sensor and a couple of 2 megapixel sensors for depth and macro shots. The camera churns out some nicely coloured shots under well lit conditions. However, once the light starts to recede, the POCO X3 stops performing. Images are bright but very grainy. On the front, there's a 20 megapixel selfie camera that clicks decent photos. On the software side, it runs on Android 10 out of the box with MIUI skinned on top of it. Xiaomi has really cleaned up its act with the MIUI and thankfully the ads in POCO's UI are almost negligible and aren't as intrusive as previous generations. Under the hood, the POCO X3 runs on Qualcomm Snapdragon 732 chipset, making it the world's first phone to use this chip. It comes in multiple configurations with 6 or 8 GB RAM and 64 or 128 GB internal storage, with the option to expand that by adding an SD card. The base variant is priced at 16,999 rupees. The verdict: The POCO X3 is a battery champ and it ticks a lot of boxes on the spec sheet as well. It has a good performance and it's hard to look past its price point. If you are on the lookout for a phone that will serve you long and well without pinching the pocket, then the POCO X3 has you covered. And now we're moving on to this SHURE Sure MV88 Plus Video Kit. And I have to tell you, I said it right in the beginning, if you're creating any kind of video content, any at all, Concentrate on the audio part first and then the video part. Your video will always catch up. The kind of equipment you have already has great video. But what you're really suffering with is audio. How do you capture your audio if the main content that you shoot on, the device that you use to shoot all that content, is actually a phone? Well, this is where this MV88 comes into play. This is a mic system, the MV88 Plus, which actually mounts on top of your phone. And the whole kit has everything you need. And today we'll actually give you a user case. The kind of ways you can use the mic, the kind of ways if it's a noisy environment, somebody's in front of you, if you want to interview two people, uh, if you're just going to vlog on your own by turning the mic around and the camera around to you, 
all of these require different mic systems, different audio capture systems. But this one system can do it all. This is one of the kits that I've absolutely and totally fallen in love with in terms of the innovation, in terms of the amount of thought that has gone into actually executing a product like this. If you create any kind of video content, even if it's not professional, even if you're not a YouTuber, if you're just doing it as a passion, as a hobby, as something you do just for home consumption, this could be your ticket. If you are someone looking to venture into content creation or you're already a content creator, then you need a good audio and video setup. Your phone's camera will do wonders in the video department, but the audio also needs to hold up on its own too. That's where the Shure MV88 Plus steps in. We got a first look at this video kit and we were blown away with the functionality on offer. With multiple presets and options to choose from, this video kit from Shure is a one-stop shop for amazing audio. The kit includes a few things like the mic which has a windscreen attached to it, an adjustable phone clamp, a shoe mount mic kit, and cables that allow easy connectivity with Android and iOS devices. All of this is packed nicely in a rolled up neoprene case that makes this kit portable and keeps its content safe and organized when not in use. There's also a mini mobile tripod inside the box. The setup was fairly easy. We could easily mount the mic on our phone. There's a cue light on the bottom of the mic that lights up once it is connected to the phone and gets power. To take advantage of the functions on the mic, the Shaw Mobile app is where we went. The app gives us the ability to change settings like audio presets, video frame rate, and even toggle between the front and rear cameras. The app also shows the audio level that the mic is picking up while recording. It has five preset modes for sound, speech, singing, flat, instruments, and loud. These presets can be used to adjust the width of the mic to get the most optimum quality of sound. For choosing the width, there are options like stereo, monocardioid, mono bidirectional, and raw mid-side, which provide a wide variety of audio widths to choose from. The MV88 Plus also allows choosing custom width in stereo mode. We tested the mic out using it as a shotgun mic in selfie mode and found the experience to be very smooth and the audio quality was loads better than the device mic. Our verdict. The Shaw MV88 Plus is a content creator's audio heaven. With crisp, clear audio and multiple modes to choose from, this is the go-to audio setup for bloggers and amateur videographers who want studio quality audio but want to pay pennies on the dollar as compared to bulky studio-like equipment. And we will move on now to this, the M31S from Samsung. Yes, yet another M series phone. Yes, yet another Samsung phone. Now, you know, the first impressions I get of the phone, of course, we'll give you a proper review, is that it's actually got a pretty premium body. I mean, when you hold the phone, look at the phone, the finish, the kind of styling that they've given, pretty premium. And then again, of course, the camera array is exactly like they've been doing on the S20 and others. It doesn't jut out as much. That's the good part of it. But other than that, it's pretty much the same. So I have to say it's a great looking phone. But, you know, in an absolutely, totally dominant category, which is a mid-segment category, does this phone live up to all the other competition? I mean, for instance, Poco X3, almost around the same price. Does it live up to things like this? That's the big question. Samsung's M series could very well stand for mid-range, but the Korean giant has done a fantastic job of offering compelling specs and a package that has everything most consumers want. The Galaxy M31s is one such phone that takes some of the key features from premium Samsung devices like an Infinity O display and single-take camera feature to a much more affordable price. But is that enough to fight off still competition from Chinese alternatives? Let's find out in our review. The Galaxy M31s has a premium design that takes cues from phones like S20 and Note 20 and distills the best bits for the mid-range segment. The glossy plastic back, referred to as glass stick, looks great but it picks up fingerprints and scratches too easily and using a case is advisable. The gradient finish, however, is premium and very aesthetic. This time around, the fingerprint scanner is integrated into the power button on the right. We found it to be fast at unlocking the phone and very convenient to reach. Elsewhere, there's a USB-C port, 3.5mm audio jack and speaker. The front sports a 6.5-inch Infinity O AMOLED display that looks crisp and vibrant. Viewing outdoors is not an issue at all here, though the centered camera module might not be for everyone. 
Overall, the ergonomics are on point and Samsung has built a premium looking piece of phone here. On the performance side, the Exynos 9611 isn't quite the latest and greatest, but hey, it gets the job done. Most users shouldn't have an issue here, but power users might want to look elsewhere, especially if gaming is a priority. The phone is available in 6 and 8 GB RAM options with storage set at 128 GB on both. However, you can use a micro SD card to expand that. Keeping the phone going all day long is the 6000 mAh battery which can be charged using the included 25 watts charger. And between the frugal processor, large battery, the phone can easily go 2 days or more between top-offs. Switching over to the cameras, there are 4 of them, a primary 64 megapixel shooter, a 12 megapixel ultra wide, 5 megapixel macro and a 5 megapixel depth sensor. The key feature here is a single take mode that lets you output a photo with filters, hyperlapse and more in a single shot. Photos from the primary camera are shot at 16 megapixel by default and look plenty good. There's a good amount of detail and the exposure is set accurately. The wide angle camera unfortunately adds a bit of distortion and the level of detail drops. It however is handy for capturing larger groups or landscapes. We weren't too impressed with the macro camera since it doesn't manage to get the white balance right all the time. And if you want to shoot good low light shots, the primary camera does a good job with good light sensitivity thanks to pixel binding and noise levels are kept in check. Finally, the phone has a 32 megapixel front facing camera that's crisp and detailed shots in daylight, but the results in low light disappoint. Overall, priced at 19,900 rupees, the Galaxy M31s offers a well packaged alternative to options by Xiaomi and other Chinese brands. It might not have the best specs on hand, but the phone is well executed with stellar battery life and cameras that do not disappoint, making it an excellent option in the category. Let's take a quick break right now on the Sale Guru Show. When we come back, lots more happening. And now let's move on to Market Watch on Sale Guru. Lots and lots of new products coming out. We've got to do this segment. I mean, we are so behind in terms of all the cool things that keep coming out. Your smartphone supports fast charging, so why shouldn't your power bank too? That's the mantra Oppo seems to be following with its latest battery pack. The Oppo Power Bank 2 supports 18 watts charging in both directions. This means that not only can the power bank be fast charged, but it will also rapidly top off your smartphone. The power bank is compatible with quick charge, USB power delivery, and other fast charging systems, which means that most phones should be compatible. The battery capacity here is 10,000 mAh, which should be enough to charge your phone almost two times from scratch. Talking about ports, the battery pack includes two full-size USB ports and a USB-C port allowing you to charge multiple devices simultaneously. Oppo claims to have a 12-factor safety assurance to ensure that the power bank doesn't heat or pose a safety hazard no matter where you're using it. Priced at 1,999 rupees, the Oppo Power Bank 2 is a great option if you want a reliable battery pack to keep in your bag and quickly charge your phone. There's no dearth of headphones in the market from affordable earphones to great sounding ones. But India based Icon is taking a design first approach to audio. The Icon Boom Boom Pro and Snug Swag Pro are two products by Icon that look stylish and pack innovative features as well. But is that enough in a market that's already crowded? Let's find out. Let's start with the Icon Boom Boom Pro Plus. This neckband style model is designed to sit comfortably around your neck all day long if you plan to make a lot of phone calls or just jam to your favorite tunes while working. We found the soft rubber finish to be very comfortable and it didn't cause any irritation even in the heat. The other big aspect that really stood out about the Pro Plus is the battery life. Nobody likes to be interrupted by a low battery notification while listening to a podcast or watching a movie and the earphones absolutely lived up to their promised claim of 28 hours of battery life. Of course, audio quality is the biggest consideration in a earphone and the Pro Plus delivers with good bass response and energetic sound that makes it the perfect workout buddy. Noise isolation is also good and it does a top-notch job of cutting out background noise. Finally, the Icon Boom Boom Pro Plus can even vibrate around your neck to give you a call or notification indication. 
The feature works well, though I can't say I was the biggest fan of it. The Icon Pro Plus is priced at 3,499 rupees and delivers class-leading battery life as well as great audio quality. Next up is the Icon Snug Swag Pro. The true wireless earphone once again has a focus on fit and comfort. Walking around, we had no issues at all with the earphones falling off and Bluetooth connectivity was rock solid too. Elsewhere, you get 5 hours of battery life which is standard for true wireless earphones. Combined with a case, you can enjoy 17 hours of music. The earphones support gestures for control and even have voice assistant support. But what really stood out for us was the call quality. Icon has placed emphasis on microphone clarity and it shows these earphones are an excellent option if you make a lot of phone calls. Priced at 4,999 rupees, the Icon Snug Swag Pro delivers a well-polished product that's a good alternative to other true wireless earphones in the market. That then is the Cell Guru show for this week. Do remember we opened up the Cell Guru store for this week, but next week the store gets even more exciting headline making phone, the Moto Razr 2. In terms of actual phones that open as a clamshell, this is the phone that came out first, made all the headlines and now it's in version 2. Join me next week on the show.